morning, everybody. I'm Tom Vass, and I'm about to fall off the camera screen. Watch this. What? Come I'm back, off. Tom. I'm coming back. There I'm I come. I'm Garcia. Hi. <laughs> I'm Sam Healy. Welcome back. All righty. Well, today we are doing our top 10 surprises of 2019. We're doing a lot of end of year coverage here. Um, and this is the first of our big list that we're doing this week. Um, we're going to be going over surprises. So, Ooh. for me, I just want to be clear, I deliberately have 10 different games. I, I didn't say you guys had to do this, but for me, I did 10 different games that I did in my top 10. Yes. That's coming yeah. Friday. So it's possible that a game that's in my top 10, I was like, Whoa, I was a little surprised by that too. Yes. It just didn't hit my top 10. These are all games that I was had very low or n like either did not have expectations for or wasn't aware of them. But also, yes, none of these made it to the top 10. If they had done so, that would have certainly surprised me, but also top 10 of the year. Some I would have just bumped yeah, them up to that. Some of these were, for me, were like, really? They made a game about that? And then it was like, oh, yeah. I actually like Oh, <laughs> I don't remember this being a negative surprise. No, 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 no. They were good. Good surprises. We want to thank some of our Kickstarter backers here. Shout outs. Um, shout outs to Lauren Marciano. She's um, in our game group. Marcicano. Yeah. The Networking Maverick. She's in our game group. Yes. Yay. Hello. She's the best. She's the best. <laughs> and then <laughs> Mathau Veliquente and Pascal Labine. This person says, I won't be insulted if they get mangled up. <laughs> so you're not insulted then. All right. And Bad Crow Games. All right. Oh, that was easy. I know. That was a much, much easier one. Bad Thank you guys games. for supporting our show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Number 10. All right. Well, my number 10 uh, is a game that I'll get to in a moment, but I did have an honorable mention because this one just <laughs> missed. No one my gave you list. 11 games, you cheater! <laughs> It just missed my list, and they're a small Japanese publisher, and I wanted to give them a shout out, but it just squeaked. And when we do a top 11, you will. Nope, I'm doing it. Moving on. Don't my care. number 10. No! My honorable mention is a game called Where Am I? Alice in a Mad Tea Party. I can answer this question. I'm right here. In the wrong. <laughs> Anyway, Alice in a Mad Tea Party is a great game. Go check it out. That's all I am. I'm just saying. Go check it out. It has great components. Check it out. I didn't even, I didn't check even know it out. about this game. I know. What That's... should people do, though, about the game? Wait, where? Should they maybe, like... Do we have this game? Check it out. Yeah. Yes. Did this game show up? In our thing? No, I played it at I played it at Essen at the Dyson Mystics thing. Uh, they, had a, they had a booth at Essen, and uh, they, they were there. They came with us, actually, at the same time. We got there at the same time. They set it up for us. We played it. It was very fun, and it was the game where I was like... Why am I stuck in this game at the first? But then at the end of the first round, I was like, at the end of the first game, I was like, let's play it again. Because it was really fun. Anyway, check it out. Check it out. My number 10 is a game called Ecos First Continent. Now, this one is a game that uh, I looked at it and I said, eh, it looks okay, but it looks boring too. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a lot of really neat mechanisms that are employed in it. It has a lot of fun stuff that you're doing. Uh, it the, the the actual things that hold the components uh, were, were the thing that kind of stood out the most for me. Yeah. Really? That's like the thing I care about the least in this one. I, I like having a neat, I guess you could say, playing surface, playing area. I like to have I think that makes the game pop even more. It showcases the game more. And the stuff that came in the game, yeah, they're just cardboard put together thingies, but they they hold the components in a neat area and they don't take up a whole lot of room in the box either. So it's it's really cool. That's the thing that first popped and I was like, okay, that's cool. Kind of a waste because it's gonna be a boring game. But then I actually enjoyed the game too. I feel like this. I feel like when I brought this to you, I was like, Sam, I feel confident you will like this game. That's I feel why like he I was said like, this. This liar. <laughs> <laughs> this game, right? I can tell. Because I knew I'm how much you like liked it. Rise of Augustus, so I figured this was a slam dunk. Yeah, I get it. That's probably what. Uh, but from looking at it, I was just like, okay, it's just another <clears throat> civilization game, or it's just an early civilization. It's just, it's going to be boring. But then they had that mechanism of. 
of uh, you know kind of like a bingo esque type thing, and I like that. It's fun, mm -hmm. and it puts it on a pretty even keel for me. So I enjoyed it. It's my number ten, Ecos First Continent. All right. My number 10 is a roll and write game that I had never heard about until I played it. It's a game called Silver and Gold. Ooh. Showed up. I mean, we were at the Gathering of Friends, Silver I think. Somebody put it on the table or brought it out and was like, okay, some. Silver yeah. Was it you? Yes, it was. Uh, my new number 10 is. <laughs> so so apparently, this is our gold. top 10 games we've introduced to each other. Is that what it is? <laughs> uh, the cool thing, the one, uh, the one thing that stood out immediately. For, for this game, uh, for me, was effectively cards here are laminated. They shuffle just fine. They don't feel laminated, but they are. And you can write on them with a dry erase marker and then just wipe them clean at the end of the game and play it again. I've played this several times with my own copy. I laminate mine just to be sure. Yeah. And they show no wear, there's no staining on the card surfaces, they look great. And, and I'd never seen that before in a roll and write. There's certainly a lot of them that you have a surface and you, you know, you can use a dry erase marker on that. But it's not a deck of cards you shuffle. Yeah. And it really works very well. I like that a lot. It's a very simple game. We played twice in a row there, if I'm not mistaken. We did. We did. I, I was instantly captivated by this one. I believe that very night, um... Looked online. It wasn't available yet, you know, yeah. but um, it, it's just a really cool game. I like it a lot. Silver and gold. You got to check this one out if you like roll and write games. I think I played that game five times over the course of the, of yeah. the gathering. And it's because it's like that where you play once and you're like, oh, let's play it again. And it's very easy to, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so easy to explain and it's, it's soothing almost in a way. It's sort of, it appeals to that part of your brain that likes Tetris for most mm -hmm. everybody. Where you sit down and you're like, oh, okay, mm, I rotate that, I put it right there. What's next? You know, it, it kind of keeps you going, keeps you engaged. I like it a lot. Silver and gold. <laughs> Alrighty, my number 10 is a game where I thought the theme would be good, but Which I of thought. Us showed it to you. Neither. I don't think either of you have played it yet, actually. I don't think Sam ever will, but you never know. I like the theme of this a lot, but Challenge I thought accepted. that it would be a boring Euro, possibly. It was not, and that is Chocolate Factory. Mm, factory. I really do. Lot. I look at that picture there and see all the chocolate flying out, and that just makes me happy. Um, but this game, when I opened up the box and saw that you're moving these crates and a conveyor belt, and I was like, oh, okay, that's not as exciting as that cover had made it out to be. Mm -hmm. And in reality, I do like moving things down a conveyor belt and putting... You, you, you're moving chocolate down this conveyor belt, but then you can upgrade it and move it to better chocolate, and then you sell it to a store. And it's a really entertaining game. I really like... It's a... I wouldn't call it a heavy Euro game per se, but it's a nice mid-weight one, I think, mm -hmm. for gamers, anyway. Um, right. Great game, Chocolate Factory. Cool. <laughs> Number nine. Why? I don't know, why not? My goodness. Okay. My number nine. Three. Is three. no, it's my number nine. It's six plus it's a six sided die plus three. Nine. Right. <clears throat> yes. is a game called Rome. And Rome is by Red Raven uh, Games and it is designed, uh, artwork, graphic design, everything is done by Ryan Lockett. And this is a I'm gonna cool call it Roam. No, it's Rome. So it's Rome by Ryan from Red Raven. Great. Yeah. Freeman Freeze got him! <laughs> <laughs> Join now, me. Now, this this was a surprise to me because, I, as far as I'm concerned, this is a departure from the kind of games that he usually is known for. Mm -hmm. He's usually known for not necessarily bigger games, but more in-depth games. And this one is largely simply a abstract strategy game where you are trying to put your markers out on di on this grid to uh, score cards that you'll be able to add to your tableau which will give you further configurations that you can use to put your markers out on different cards later on in the game and all you're really doing is you're scoring points trying to have the most points at the end of the game uh, it's largely just abstract strategy but it looks really good and the reason this is kind of a surprise for me is because it's it's so different from most of the other games he's put out there's been one that he put out that looked very similar to this and i can't remember what it was called um 
But anyway, well, I mean, near and far, you mean? No, it, no, no, no. It not has near that and same far. motif to not it. Near the and bingo far. one? He, maybe. The. I can't remember the name. Dingo's of it. Dreams or yeah, something. Like yeah, yeah. Dingo's whatever. Dingo's yeah. Something like that. Anyway, it's it has, not his design. Right, though, it's not his design. But he, but he put he, it out. He put yes. it out. Right. So that's that's why it was a surprise to me. The second thing is that it's it's another abstract strategy game that I really like, and that's a surprise for me as well. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I think at this point you just got me. You like no, abstract not, strategy no, games? I no, I like. Do you not feel this? No, I games. like good looking abstract strategy games. You come at me with an abstract judging strategy my game, appearance. That is, I judge by what's in their heart. Right. Sure. Okay. I look on the inside. Yeah, look on the inside. There's nothing I there. I never judge a That's book why by they call its cover. It abstract. That's a lie. Um, anyway, Rome is a great game, and it's very fun. I uh, just finished editing my review of it just like 10 minutes ago. Oh, spoilers. So check that out here in a little Don't bit. Don't have to watch it now. That's my number nine, uh, Rome. My number nine Where is... I lay my head is home, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Had to do it. All right, cool. Uh, my number nine is a game called Unmatched. And this is... Unmatched. From Restoration Games. I like their yeah. games. It just... It was not a reprint I was expecting. And it is also pretty removed from that reprint. This is based on a Star Wars game, originally. Which is amazing. Epic Duels. Which I... No, didn't, it's not. Never crossed my mind it's much. Okay. I never sat around thinking, Epic Duels is so good. I'm I hoping somebody... I think Star Wars is amazing. And I like Star Wars Epic Duels. You do Star like Wars that card Star Wars is game. amazing. Epic Duels is okay. Well, I think That's why good. they had to improve it before they released it. I think it I'm again. fine improved. My only, my only problem was I think the board could have used some work. You they, mean artwork? Uh, those, those circles... <laughs> pull they, me out of the, the background a little. But they're so functional. That they're right. That's the problem. They really Not like... No, no, no. There's the only best line of sight system in the world. From what game I is apologize. it for? Ten hoys ah! I, I apologize that I softballed that. My yes. fault. I'll sit quiet. Go ahead. Continue Go ahead. to tell us. Uh, this <laughs> is a good game. I was surprised by this game because it's good. And the theme is surprisingly good. I like it. Why are you speaking in staccato? The End by Z Garcia. This is like a... <laughs> Bad impression of. You want to drop the Kirk. mic? This? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna play unmatched, you've got to get <laughs> tra trashed. I don't know. Okay. You don't have to rhyme if it's spoken. You can do whatever you want. Right now. <laughs> um, that's all I got. You, I don't know what else to say. You guys were enough for no, a while. No, this there. is great, man. This is a great game. Yeah, I like it a lot. Fantastic. Very cool. Good. Nine. Go. All right, my number 10 was about chocolate, so I need to counteract that with my number 9. Peanut like, butter. Yeah, what is it, like salty crackers or something? No, point salad. Oh, oh you went straight for the antithesis. <laughs> That's true. Um, point salad, the cover, does not do this game any anything. And also, I have this small innate dislike of... Salad? No, of, of names that also describe oh. the mechanisms. <laughs> It is a point salad, the point salad game, you know, that sort of thing. That's a goofy building, thing. The duck building game. Yes. So, but, man, oh, man, did this game do so well for me this year. This is, I, don't, I don't know if it's my most played game of the year, but it's pretty high up there. It's because such a clean, neat little concept. It's like Sushi Go. It's so easy to teach people. Just yeah. constantly over and over. It's fun to play. It's just a really solid little game. So, have your chocolate, but also have your salad. And that is about as far as the analogy is going to go. That's yeah. good advice for all you folks back home. Chocolate and salad. Just put don't out, mix some, the two. Put some salad chocolate is, in your salad. No. Actually, that might not. No, that's horrible. No, it might, might be good. Salad is not food. It is a promissory note that food is about to come. Okay, thanks, Ron Swanson. But. Um, I'm just saying. You, you like salad? What are you talking about? I do, but not when it's just points. <laughs> Okay, that's my number nine. Chocolate in yours. <laughs> number eight. You threw it already. Too okay, late. deal with it. You did it in the break. Calm down, buddy. All right, my There's number eight. There's another die on the table. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's over there. 
My number eight is a game from Pandasaurus Games. It's a game called Wayfinders. Oh, okay. Really? Wayfinders, uh, I liked the look of the cover. When you put it out, I was like, yeah, maybe it'll be okay. Um, but I, I did really enjoy this game. And now it's a little bit, I think, if I'm remembering it correctly, this can be a little bit nastier than the game will let on. A little, a little bit more mean. To be you, fair, I feel like we can make... The most pleasant of games, nasty. No, some games lend itself to it. Um, oh, okay. And yes, you exploit it more often than not. But this one really lends itself to being nasty to people um, because you can take the stuff that they really need first before they can get to it. Uh, and that just kind of rubs you the wrong way sometimes. But overall, it's a very pleasant game. I like uh, the mechanism of being able to move around the board. I thought it was really restrictive at first, but it turns out that it isn't. And that's what I liked about it. That's, that was kind of the surprise factor for me. So I did enjoy it a lot. I had a great fun playing it. Wayfinders. Uh, it also has one of those kinds of uh, rule sets that you play once and got it. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't go away. And, and I like that as well. So that's my number eight, Wayfinders. My number eight is a small card game, which really is a tile laying game, called The Door and Gardens. And this is from the same company that put out The City of Kings. This gigantic game filled to the brim with stuff. Doesn't look like he agrees with you. The Vador and Gardens game here is a tiny little box. It has a bunch of square little cards in it, and I wasn't sure what to expect. Artwork is, was good right away. I could tell the artwork was very well done. And the game looked um, interesting, but light. However, when I played this game, I was really enamored with it. It's a thinky tile laying game. It's got a good amount going on. And it is both approachable, but it's going to make you jump through some hoops to do well in it. You're going to want to play this more than once because you might find it a bit obtuse the first time. It's hard to find scoring combinations. But the idea is you're playing a card every, every round, always building uh, to your right. And you can only ever make this line you're creating, this, this garden, uh, five lines tall. So that means you can only ever be two off of the last one and only in you know one direction. You can not, not keep building up because then it's wider than that. Hard to manage to do all that well. I really like it. If you like games that are those, you know, there's a bunch of them now, but these uh, games where you're playing cards as a grid, as a you know tile laying, but you want one that's a little tighter, a little more restrictive, it's going to make you think a little bit more, this is a good one for that. Vador and Gardens. Or you can just skip the game. You don't I, like it? I, I dislike this one, yeah. Really? It's too restrictive. I want I like the idea, like, oh, put these cards down and you form rows of points, but then sometimes you're stuck. Oh, I, got, I guess I stick a card down and just shear off any points I was getting from that. Now I'll start over again. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. And then that whole... The, the scoring is more obtuse than it needs to be. This could have been a lighter game. This needed development. I like that in my it opinion. is light. No, I, I, I agree with you that, that it's restrictive. I disagree that it should be lighter. I think it's precisely precisely that is what puts it on the list. The I got fact no that it away is, from it. Though. It I looks like, like that kept... same trick taking. What was that one that shouldn't have been a trick taking game? Sure, but then when they took it the trick taking like out of that game, uh, which is. Um, uh, everyone's fairly the name of it. Um, it was a better game. I don't. I just thought that the whole you got to get it from the row, and then, and then you're counting the the number of stuff. I don't know. The thing it just felt like there was too many rules for a card game. Oh, you made that joke already <laughs> once. <laughs> we kept going, so I was figured, you know, we're having an intellectual discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anyway, it I'll is really watch. pretty though, for sure. I will give you that. Yes. <laughs> All right, after you have some chocolate and salad, oh, sit down and play some that? video games. You're going to tell a whole story with these? Maybe. All right, go ahead. My number eight is a game I did not expect to be that good because the video game has no appeal to me, although my kids love it a lot, and that is Minecraft. Hmm. Uh, Minecraft, the builders and biomes. When I saw this, 
it sounded like cha-ching, you know, sure. write a check. There's a gazillion people play Minecraft. My kids play it almost every day. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Minecraft. I know you build your own worlds and little monsters show up. And apparently there's a Choose Your Own Adventure Netflix show, which I hate it every second of watching that. Um, okay. But... This game is a solid game, whether you like Minecraft or not. You have your little figures there in that grid. You're moving them around, collecting blocks off this big giant block pile, which is pretty neat in its own sense, using those blocks to build different things, and you're going to put them in your grid and try to have connecting areas that are all the same, or fighting monsters. You can get more treasure, and then you shuffle your deck and draw a few and try to beat the monsters. So you can do a little bit of push your luck, or you can collect resources. It's a really cool family game. I was very surprised. The component quality is cool. It hits the Minecraft theme, I was told. I didn't know what anything was. Um, but at the same time, if you, if you don't like Minecraft, I think you'll enjoy it. So that was it was a surprise for me. These are... No, not in order of how... No, they're in order of how much I like the games. But that was a, one of the bigger surprises. Cool. Number seven... Go ahead. No. I'm waiting. All right. <laughs> Four. Plus, I had that turned to a one. There's it was not a three. even like a unifying theme to this. No, it's just. I don't know what you're doing. Random acts of chaos. All right, my number seven. You'll be wearing your Joker outfit for this. Yep, my number seven is a. I guess there's a little bit of chaos to this game, so that fits. That works. I'll, I'll help those. See, I was trying to be useful. I'll help Thank the tomfoolery you. that's going on. Stop mocking Find my name. Place. Uh, this one is called Flick of Faith. Now, uh, this one uh, came out from Awaken Realms Light, and Awaken Realms Light has been hit or miss for me. They only have a couple of, of games. I think it's Siege Storm is one, and that was kind of a blah, 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 blah for me. Uh, so when Awaken Realms Light came out with this one, I was like, okay, it's just going to be another one of those blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was going to say, could you explain how that one made you feel again? Yes, there you go. Uh, but, I'm, and I'm also not very big on flicking games. I've only liked a, a few of them in, in the past. Um, uh, the, what's the Western one? The Flick them up. Flick them up. There you go. Flick, Flick them in. I've liked that one, and that's pretty much it. I really like the Dead of Winter adaptation of that a little bit better than the original game. So that's really kind of the extent of my flicking game foray. Uh, but this one, Flick of Faith, I wonder how many F words I can get in here. <laughs> well, we don't want kids to watch the show I anymore. Mean, I could really go off the end, right? Take a long walk up a short period, but I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Flick of Faith is a good one. Um, I like how you each have different uh, powers that are available to you that can let you do different things. Some of them are larger pieces. Nothing. I was just... Some of them are larger pieces. Sometimes you can have a, a little hand of God that you can put out there as a backstop or a bank or what have you. There's just a lot of cool things that you do in this. And on top of that, it's quick, it's fast, and it's easy, and it's fun. So that's why it uh, made my list. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it, but I did, and I had a good time with it. My number seven, Flick of Faith. You didn't play this, right? I did. He doesn't like it. You did not like it. My number seven <laughs> is... I thought it was okay. Yeah. Uh, was a game I also just saw one day at a convention. Uh, I, I did not realize it was coming out. I hadn't heard about it. And it's a game in a line of games that is big. It's major. It's King Domino Duel. Just sort of happened. Wait, didn't you just play this? No, I played this Dice Tower Con. I mean... Oh, 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 oh. oh. Has, have you reviewed this? Yeah, like around the time of Dice Tower Con after I played it. Oh, I need to get this out of my queue then. That's what I'm talking about. This game just kind of like was there months ago. I hadn't heard about it. The booth had it. Like the publisher had it there. I thought it was new. It's weird. It flew completely under the radar, this game. And mm -hmm. so I got a copy that was like, oh, this is a thing? Okay. It's a dice game? It's a roll and ride? Okay. Huh. Fine, this is like Jump the Shark King Domino because it's been popular. Cool. It was actually a very different game from King Domino or Queen Domino. And it was actually a different roll and write than the typical vibe those games give me. This, you know, bingo-esque or just like Yahtzee, fill in some numbers or whatever. This one's really cool. You're rolling two dice uh, or multiple dice. 
and you are creating a domino from two of them. You put basically two dice together, they create a domino that you write in on your sheet. Ooh, dice dominoes. And depending on which symbols you are collecting, you're sort of playing this tug of war game with your opponents, only two obviously. If you are able to get a certain number of faces on your board, you unlock a power. So there's a good amount going on for a little game that plays in about 20 minutes. I was really impressed by it. Part of that, again, is because I wasn't expecting anything from it. I figured it wouldn't be very good. But also, it's not just King Domino again. It's not just King Domino with dice. It's something else. And that's really what I wanted from it. Yeah, so that's cool. I like this one a lot. King Domino Duel, my number seven. You haven't played or you did play? No, I was going to play it, but I'm not now. Right. No, I will. Wow. Is, is there is there a, a, no? <laughs> is there a reason that specifically two? Like, could it not go more than two? I, I don't know how the game plays. Roll and rights usually can scale. This one can't. It's called King Domino. Right. No, no, no. I know that. I was just curious about it because it's roll and rights. No, it's just two uh, because uh, the way the dice drafting works. Okay. Maybe that's why it didn't do so well. I think it's just not gotten a lot of. Word of mouth or, or which advertising, is which is strange for a spiel of cards. That's right? what I'm saying. Yeah. Wouldn't this game get a lot of buzz? That would be right. like coming out with a, another Azul game, but not advertising it very much and just having it drop. It's like, wait, what? I don't got any kind of uh, segue here, so I'm done eating and video gaming. So, well, lay it on us, and I'll try to find you one. This one was a surprise to me because I thought the game sounded interesting, but I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. It was designed by a group of kids, essentially, or college kids, um, high school kids, and that is Map Maker, the gerrymandering game. Uh, nope, you were right. What, no segue? No segue. No segue on that one. So this looks like a political game, and, and it is in a sense, but it's not specifically mentioning parties, and in fact, I wish they had left the elephant and the the it's donkey an off the cover. It's an educationally political game. It's not a political game. Sure, right. You're not going to play this and get mad at... Well, you no. might get mad at people who do gerrymandering. <laughs> but in this game, it's an area control game. You are building these walls. It has a little bit of similarities to domain in that way. You're building walls, trying to get your tokens, which are on the board, into areas where you control, but not have all your tokens in the same area, because that would be a waste of them. Mm -hmm. It's really well done. It scales really well. It has nice pieces. I like everything about it, really. I like the idea that, I like the entrepreneur. I, I feel like, like, I, like if I'm a judge on Shark Tank, these would be the kids come through and are like, look at our game. And I'd be like, that's it, I'm investing. You know, that's how I feel about this. Would you pay for better artwork? I don't hate that artwork. So no, okay. You're so mean, dude. No, I'm saying you wouldn't pay for better artwork because you like this artwork. I think it, well, no, like I said, I would have cut the elephant and the donkey off it. But I don't mind, again, it's not making fun of any one party. Oh, no, that's good, and I, I like that. It's just, no, it's, it looks like a mass market game. Maybe it kind of is, right? I think they were they Except were shooting for the for fact her. that the availability isn't there. It is kind of a mass market game, but it is better than a lot of mass market games. Yeah, well, I like it a lot, and I was surprised it was as good as it was. This so. was on my short list. It just didn't make the cut for my 10. This is a good game. It's very fun. Yeah. Cool. Map making the gerrymandering game. Number six. Whoops. What you got for us? Oh, yeah, sorry. Come on, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. My phone, man. You just... Cr no, I'm just kidding. You didn't cr <laughs> no, I really, we'd have to pause the live stream if that was the case. <clears throat> All right. Jeez. My number six is actually a, just, just a, a re-theming of Wildlands, and that is Judge Dredd Helter Skelter. And that's one of the reasons why it's on this list is because I didn't really care for... Wildlands. I didn't mind it. I played it, and I was like, well, okay, whatever. But it had this very general um, uh, um, fantasy theme on it, and I was like, okay, whatever, ho-hum. Uh, it didn't really grab me, but uh, I've been a fan of the Judge Dredd uh, series over the course of my life. I'm not a huge fan, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's just one of those characters in comic books that just kind of stood out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what grabbed me on this one. And it's one of the cases where a theme matters. 
uh, to me. I could have cared. I couldn't have cared less about the fantasy theme of Wildlands. But with this one, it gives it more life. And it makes it a little bit more fun to play in that in, in that way for me. Uh, and that's why it's on my list, because I, I really just wrote it off to begin with. I looked at it simply because of the of the theme. I enjoyed it um, more than I did Wildlands because of the theme. So I, I, I think this is great. I think if Wildlands bores you, give this one a whirl. Um, I think See, on I, that, I disagree. I don't think if you like one, you're going to... If you don't like one, why would you like the other? I necessarily didn't like... Wild but you lands. are affected by theme more than almost anyone I know. Okay. Except for that, your secret love for abstract strategy games. But I mean, it's essentially the same game. Essentially, but there's different powers. Yeah, I just don't see if you, if you don't like Wildlands, you ain't gonna like this. There's thematic powers too. Yeah. So I mean, if 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 you don't like fantasy, but you do like okay, that I might give that. But if, if you don't like fantasy, if you didn't like Wildlands, I think you might like this one better because of the theme. If you like that comic book series, it's not just Judge Dredd. There's um, Strontium Red, and there's a whole bunch. It's the level uh, 2099 series. I can't remember the actual 2080 name. 2080. 2080. Yeah, sorry. Company. Uh, that's the company that makes out this line of comic books, and it's it's one faction from each of their different uh, families of comic books. And so, if you like that, and you didn't really care for the fantasy theme of of Wildlands, I think this might hit the table more often for you. I don't think there's. I will agree wrong on that, that very specific. Yes, that I agree on. That's what I said at the beginning. Tell them again. If you <laughs> didn't necessarily like. Wildlands, but you like the theme of Judge Dredd, you should give this a try. Now, see, I'm back to disagreeing again. <laughs> anyway, my number six, Judge Dredd, Helter Skelter. That was fun. All right. Well, you should my have been snuffing your drink real loud, then, if that's the case. Oh, no, that's rude. <laughs> my number six is a Poor game funny. I uh, that had a cool-looking cover for when I saw the pictures online, knew nothing else about it, <laughs> wasn't sure I was going to like it, and I ended up really enjoying it. Liking the multiplayer version, liking the solitaire mode to the point that I played it live, solitaire. It's a game called Theron, and it is uh, it has a somewhat generic somewhat. Um, <laughs> well, it's Excuse Egyptian. Me. It's an Egyptian theme, yeah, which is yeah. not as overused as it once was. I think. Oh, I thought you were going to say a somewhat Egyptian theme. Oh, that's right. No, no, somewhat was. generic Egyptian theme. Like it doesn't. It takes that theme and just sort of gives you those things you've seen in a lot of them. The theme isn't that strong. You're sort of just collecting victory points from a bunch of different places. Now, it does have a few cards that are going to give you unique powers and ways to bend the rules. Those add to the, to the theme a little bit or to that, that fun that comes from bending the rules. But overall, it's kind of a by-the-numbers game. But you know what? It manages to mix a few different flavors to steal a little bit from your playbook into a, an interesting stew of mechanisms that I found engaging. And I thought it was fun to play. I thought it was pretty fun to teach, actually. I taught it and enjoyed doing that. And the solitaire mode really pushed it up for me because they took the trouble to include components and thought into the solitaire mode. It's a, it's a really well put together solo play. So I, I enjoyed doing that a lot, um, to the point that, again, like I said, I played Solitaire by myself. I thought, I want to do this again. I think I want to stream this. <coughs> Did, had a fun time doing that. So, um, yeah, Faron is a good one. If you like mid-weight Euros, you, you're good with this theme, and you want something that is going to give you that point salad -y sort of feel without overwhelming you with rules, I recommend you give this one a shot. I'm, I'm thinking... This is seriously going to fly under the radar. So you might want to get your hands on hmm. it. Yep. Fair on. Now, nah, nah, after you just mentioned it, now nah, I got blow up. Sure. Nah, nah, nah. My number six is a game that we declared last week we Most would not broken. play live. Huh. Uh, but I think this game is hilarious. Was not expecting it. Played it. Loved it. And I will probably play it quite a bit when Age I go to conventions. Age of Dirt. Age of Dirt. <laughs> this game is... It's so dumb and yet also entertaining at the same time. Yeah. It is essentially a collect resources and turn them in to get cards that are worth points. That's the game. But you do that by putting people in various spots, uh, different <laughs> areas. You can see them here. What are some of those spots? You can so you've got the plains, you got the mountains, and you got the woods. And you and got the love hut. <laughs> so you throw people into these. 
And then you can also resolve one of these by you'll pull that up, pull all those people out and throw them through the passage, which is essentially a cube tower. Some of them will get caught in there. And then the ones that fall out do the work, have the babies, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, that's the whole game. You can also hit the tower with a stick if they don't come out. There's a tiger that eats your people. Yeah. And a bear. And a bear. There's some goofiness mixed into slight, the... There's a slight bit of innuendo that might sure. slide throughout the game, depending on your group. So This was fun because it took pretty simple sort of Euro mechanisms and added a dollop of silliness to it, kind of. It sort of... It doesn't does, oversay it's welcome it to. It's not like take 45 itself minutes. seriously also, and you can tell it does not take itself seriously. Mm -mm. I like that. It's not necessarily my type of game, but you know what? The game is aware of what it wants to be and does that, and I respect it for that, I think. It's also, honestly, a change of pace for WizKids. Yeah. Because their games... This has a molded insert. It has yeah. nice pieces and artwork. Their games don't always have all that stuff. Right. This one is well done. This is one I think will also fly under the radar. Actually, that's kind of the point of most of the games on this list. I guess prob so, I guess Probably. So. But it's one that I would check out. I'll have a review coming out this week. Cool. Age of Dirt. Number five. Oh, I was going to set it neatly on top, you dork. Huh? What happened? I was trying to be thoughtful of those who put their phones on the table. I messed it up. He did. He are wrecked you, it. Are you happy with my chaos? Good. <laughs> Good. I learned from the bad. You did. All right, my number five is a game called Dinogenics. Dinogenics for me was just, uh, oh, look, it's another game that's trying to be Jurassic Park, the, the board game, without being Jurassic Park, the board game. So, is that, um, is that how you go shopping? That's, yes, that's what. <laughs> that's the voice that was in my head when I first saw this game. I was like, "Oh boy, we're gonna." Back that's a really cool looking cover, it man. It is, but most of these games have really cool looking covers because it's really, it's almost difficult to make dinosaurs not look cool. You have to try <laughs> to not making. Well, okay. Challenge accepted. Lack of ability, <laughs> notwithstanding. Somebody throw me a pencil. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, with this one, I was just like, okay, it's just going to be another thing that's going to loosely replicate the Jurassic Park experience and just ultimately fail. Not so. This one was a really fun game, and I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed uh, finding the different DNA sequences that you have to put together in order to uh, get your different species into your pens. And then you have to make sure that they don't break out, because then you'll have to worry about them eating their people and all this other kind of stuff. It was really a fun experience, and the component quality is really high on this one as well. So that's everything just kind of congealed into a very fun experience that I was not expecting at all. So that's why it made my list number five, Dinogenics. This was a heavier game than I expected. It was. It it was when it came out all right this is five uh my number five game is a pick up and deliver game not a lot of those it has a nautical theme you picked them up and delivered them mm -hmm. there you no, go. I, i'm breaking his chain you don't want them yeah i do there Asian you go you know you're weak you're weak for those dice <laughs> they make this, my knees go weak it's a game called tricky tides Tricky Tides has a really cool cover. It makes me think of that. Um, am I not saying the right thing? I'd like to say the Tricky Tides. I'd Thank like you. Okay, okay, there we right go. Uh, I really like this cover. I like the artwork on the back of the box uh, when I saw it. You can't read the word Tricky Tides. I don't like that cover. And uh, it gave me that feeling of artwork you might find on an old copy of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It has that look. I really liked that right away. And then the gameplay really has that vibe to it as well. You're moving your ship around, you are collecting goods, you are storing those goods, delivering them where you are, you know, uh, where, where they're wanted. And then grabbing cards, using those cards uh, to move around, basically. It's kind of a trick-taking game that as you are wrapping up each trick, you then do some movement, pick up and deliver with it. It's a cool combination of actions going on. Scoring's a little... <sighs> I'm going to say if you're like a purist, if you're only there because you must destroy, you're, you're, you're unwilling to accept that 
part of the of the mechanisms are there for fun and not for you to flex your brain. You might have a problem with the scoring. There's hidden. You have goal cards that if you score really well for the whales, they might be there might be fewer of them out there. That's what I'm talking about. So if you feel you know like this game isn't is punishing me randomly, yeah maybe go play something heavier. I really liked it. I liked it a lot. It's a cool game. It's engaging. It's a fun way to do trick taking with pickup and deliver. It's a it's a weird combination. So check this one out again. Probably will fly under the radar. Just like Tom said, these games are likely to do that. But this one's uh, one you don't want to miss. I think. Tricky tides. All right, my number s five. Four. I almost said six. Five is a game that I didn't know much about, and I played it, and it blew me away. And this one came really close to making my top ten of the year, actually. That's really? um, enjoyable. This is simple engine building game with dice, and that's Fantastic Factories. This is just a oh, wow. solid, solid game. You you get some cards, you roll dice, you put the dice on the cards, put out the, what you get the resources to build cards, and you can do all this simultaneously. That's what I really like about this game, is that you're rolling the dice, Jeez. putting them out. That looks like a lot. Uh, that's, ah, that's that is like, the game. no, that is like end game stuff going yeah, on there. All right. My <laughs> There's a ton of stuff out in that one. It, it's not that complicated. Yeah, you have like one building and then maybe a few more, but it's still kind of like I rolled a four. I can use it in these two buildings. Which one? Okay, this gives me a resource. Now I can play this card. And it is so good. The, qu the component quality is also really well done. The, uh, I can't is think. Is it Machi Koro esque? It sounds I'm not, like it. I've not played much. There's not a lot of. There's nothing here. The one. Okay, I guess the negative thing is you very almost not at all affect other players. I like that. And between each I round, like you, 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 you. I know. That's what kept it off my list. The, the, the player, lack of player no, interaction? The, yeah. Yeah, in, in between turns, you draft cards so I could draft the card you want. But other than that, Dude. that's it. On your turn, you then build your own stuff. You roll dice. If I roll three, I can put on this card, which gives me a wood, I mean a metal. Now I can use that metal to build this card and then use that four that I rolled previously and put it on that card to get a resource. I like that. It's there just a neat thing. There are other cards that you can, their powers help you screw around with other people. And that's what I didn't like because it was very much a solitaire-esque kind of game where I'm trying to get my engine going, but every once in a while you can have people go, eh, on something. I don't remember exactly what it is, but there are some things where you can take stuff from other people or... Uh, There's cards in the middle where there was a little bit of that. Yeah, that's But that I mean. happened between turns. That's your fault for having a nice stockpile of stuff I want to steal. No, nah, see, uh, no. Nah. It's very minimal player interaction. But anyway, fantastic. I love the artwork. I like that funky Dr. Seuss-ish, not Dr. Seuss-ish, but uh, app-driven vibe to it, I guess. I don't know. I just like it. It looks like an app, the artwork. Yeah, yeah. It's this very, is a game, I think. Very uh, geometrical uh, artwork. Just a solid game. Play it. Great game. Fantastic Factories. Number four. I'm being thoughtful now. You can go. I'm quietly building. You know you're tempting the fates with Sam sitting there. Oh, I already did it last turn. You didn't even notice. That was because it was off camera. Mm -hmm. I'm supporting it. There we go. That's cute. Go. Go ahead. go ahead. Do things. Get it. All right, my number four is uh, a game that I just played recently. I've only played it once, um, but I, I really liked it. And it was off my radar until I played it, and I played it, really enjoyed it, and that's why it's on my surprises and why it's kind of high up, uh, because I wasn't even thinking about the game. Aquatica is uh, the game that uh, I'm, I'm talking about today. And that is... <laughs> He's being re re ridiculous Aquatica, over here. Aquatica, <laughs> man, the one that got away. Okay. Oh, you haven't played this one yet. No. No, nobody you have it. Nobody will play it with me. I'll play it with you. No, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I see he's good. I knew that was going to I knew he was going to say that. Solitaire. This is a really neat game, and I like uh, a lot of the... Uh, first of the first thing I was really surprised about... The first thing that really surprised me about the game was the component quality. It's bad. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's really good. Oh, I see. I understand. Artwork is amazing. Uh, I love the player boards that you tuck cards into and uh, reveal, or not not reveal, you... you 
kind of stuff them further in as you use different abilities on the card. And then once you've got it all the way up there, you can score it. Michael Scott. <laughs> What's wrong? Sorry, sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. I'm being immature over here. I don't understand. You're good. No, you're just There's nothing the wrong correctly. with what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. It's also called sliding. Uh, on top of that, yeah, slider, whatever, tuck it, whatever. Um, stuff it. Huh? Anyway. Just, yeah, you like you hide resources. Is that not it? No, not resources. It's usually like special abilities. Abilities. You Sometimes use it, it's a resource you hide that it. you get by tucking it um, or right. sliding it, if you guys will like Tuck that. and slide. A bunch of morons. Um, it's mostly Tom. I know. That one was me. Well, I apologize. You're joining him. So I'm not joining <laughs> anybody, by okay? Associ association. No. He's on my team. <laughs> Nobody's what are we talking about? I really enjoyed this game. It has uh, a neat uh, set collection aspect to it, uh, uh, resource usage, uh, a lot of really cool things about it. The manta rays that come in, or the stingrays, cool. they are so cool. Little plastic they're, manta rays. They're just tokens, though. They don't really have any other usage other than, I'm going to use this, I'm going to turn it over. But the component is really cool and it just makes the game pop a little bit more so i really enjoyed it wasn't expecting to at all my number four aquatica it's like i said the only game i think from all these lists <laughs> that i'm like man i should have played like i wish i could have played it you yeah. haven't heard the rest yet you don't know no the rest is garbage all right my number four game is an uva rosenberg game hold up what <laughs> can we say that start over again my number four game is a game from uva rosenberg what Better, better. That was the closest. Know. You gotta have the crack, <laughs> uh, the crack in the voice. That's what I meant to say. Uh, wait, this wait. Is, what did he come out with this year? I'm trying to think now. Oh, so many things. That no, he is, did not. That man is prolific Ooh. and attractive. He went back. <laughs> I don't know. He went back to his roots with some smaller games this year, right? He did. He came out with a game called uh, Luna Nova, or Nova Luna, or whatever, which was an abstract tile laying game, and then something else entirely. Another abstract tile laying game, but that one's better. It's called Robin of Loxley. Oh, yeah, I haven't played this one yet. This is good stuff. It is a two player only game, uh, like I said, and in it is a grid of tiles. From those tiles, you are going to take turns back and forth collecting one. You have one piece that is going to move like a, uh, what is it? A, rook? No, which one? In, in, which is the horse? Wow, this chest? game looks so good from this picture. The knight. The night. Wait, you took this picture, didn't I you? I took it, man. What's up? This picture looks like garbage. Oh, Snapple. Oh, it looks really... This game really looks like... Um, so, wait. I'm, I'm getting mixed messages. Well, you like my photography or don't you? I do. Thank now, what you. this game looks like... Um, it does. I know it's exactly like that. But it doesn't play like that. Uh, the interesting part is that, uh, unlike Targi, this one... Yes! ...is uh, much more uh, something than that one. No. You're moving the piece like a knight in chess. You move to a tile, you pick up that tile. And then what you are doing, either before you do that or after, is simply try to move your scoring piece on the outside. The outside is randomized. You build it at the beginning. But it's a series of tiles with goals you have to accomplish. Like have at least one green one. Cool, that's an easy one. You can usually you know, have that and move ahead. You can move ahead as far as you want to on a turn. Some of them you need to be in a specific position in relation to the other player's piece. Those are a little trickier. The cool thing is, you can always choose to pay to skip one. It's a lot like Gates of Luoyang or Reichholt, you know, um, where you are trying to just push your way ahead and sometimes you have the one in front of you, you have, right now, you qualify for it. The next one you don't, but the one after that you do. So you might pay for the middle one just to jump all three. Man, I want to play this game. You really, really should, and I will be happy to show it to you and or destroy you in it. Robin of Loxley, check it out if you like this idea of manipulating little puzzles and you're cool with the abstractness of it. I like it a lot. Cool. My number four is I was getting, I really do like the exit games, the escape room games. Yeah. And so when they announced this one, I thought, well, we'll have to wait and see. But it was uh, the Phil Walker Harding name that kind of brought this one around. And that's Adventure Games, The Dungeon specifically, although there was the other one. I don't remember what it was called. The Demon. This game is so generically named. 
It looks generic as it all has that get generic, out It's too. called Adventure Games, The Dungeon. <laughs> That's just not... It's just, I don't understand why they would go with that. That's like set up for failure, both of those things. But it is. But the Phil Walker-Harding-Matthew Denson combo had me thinking, well, maybe, right? I and they agree. said, that, and also I was thinking, what are they going to do new in the escape room? Well, basically, they took out the puzzle part and just put in story. And this game does essentially what that, what was that one where you, we played the big book from Fantasy Flight? Oh, oh. Uh, Dragon Halt, right? Yeah. Dragon Halt. Like yeah, Dragon it's, Halt. it's very similar to that, but it's, it's, it's much smaller. And it's very similar to a point and click adventure. Go here. I try to get through the door. I can't get through the door. Look under couch. Found a key. Oh, now I can stick the key in the door. Mm. That sort of thing. Really enjoyed this. You still haven't played this yet, right? No. And they also did one about a laboratory, which was also good, but the dungeon one is just, it's fantastic. It was this one you like, you so both entertaining. You, like yeah. you play them one time, um, you go through, but it, and it's about three hours maybe worth of content. But you I can break that up, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, it's broken up into three parts. Like they that. say six hours, but okay. Not for Tom Vassell, baby. <laughs> This man is That is not. Smart. That is not. M S A R T. M S E R T. Smart, smart. M S U R T. Anyway, uh, if you have not played this one, it's a really fun experience, an adventure style game. My number four, Adventure Games, The Dungeon. Number three. All right. Oh, it's alive. Oh. oh my goodness. You couldn't wait I couldn't. until it got to the top. I could not longer wait. My number three. Uh, this is a game by Johnny Pack. And uh, he. Johnny Pack? Is that what he just said? <laughs> yeah, Johnny Pack. Johnny Pack. I can't remember, I can't remember his last name. It's Johnny Pack Canton, maybe? I want to say? Anyway, it's a fistful of meeples. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, Johnny Pack. Yeah, it says Game by Johnny Pack. I can't remember his last name. Johnny Pack wears a cowboy hat. Canton. I gotta give him. I gotta yeah, give him. Yeah, he does. He gotta does. give him props for that. Um, he knows how to. He knows how to wear a hat. <laughs> I have it's no idea. Pretty simple. Ooh, what do we all are talking about? He knows how to wear a hat too. See, look. Yeah, he really does. Um, but anyway, so this one takes. Just put it on your head. The Mancala mechanism of taking everything from one uh, part of the board and dropping one piece at a time around. And that's pretty boring. And when I heard it first, I was like, eh, okay. I'm always on the lookout for Wild West themed games, though, because they seem to be underutilized a bit. So when I saw this one, I was interested because of the Wild West theme. But when I heard that it was Moncala uh, at the base, I was like, eh, okay. But played it through. Got a couple of the rules wrong to begin with. Uh, got some clarification on it. Played it again. Really enjoyed it. And I've played it a few more times since then at Essen. And uh, just really enjoyed this game a lot. I love how all of the different color meeples work in different ways. Uh, this feels like your go-to game to take places. It is. It is right now. Because it's very simple to teach, but it has a lot of stuff underneath those very simple rules uh, that you have to just kind of get into through, through gameplay. But uh, this one was one of my strongest surprises from Essen. Wasn't expecting it going in. Wasn't on my radar going in. But uh, this was one of my uh, best games for messing and uh, biggest surprises. So that's my number three. Fistful of meeples. That sounds like five tribes. Uh, it is, but it doesn't take itself seriously like five tribes does. So I'm gonna come over when it's five tribes and be like, oh, five I tribes see the is movie a little bit of a do. snooty Euro style. This one's just real fun. I like five tribes. Yeah, because you're snooty. <laughs> All right, my number three game is a game that uh, it's a card game version of a board game that came out a long time ago. And I didn't realize this was being done. And Sam's going to correct my pronunciation in a second here. Kodachi. Um, no, that's pretty good. You're going to... No, come on. You know I wasn't right. Well, you may not have been, but you're not... It's not... It doesn't say what you think I'm going to correct you as saying. It's what? Not, it's not Kodachi. What is it? Kodachi is Korean for nose snack. Booger. But that's not what this is. I feel both enlightened and disgusted. There you Wait, go. are you saying no snack and booger are the same word? Or is that your 
No. Equivalency. No. You lived in Korea longer than I did. How do you not know this? I picked my nose less. No. I don't pick my nose hardly at all. <laughs> but a lot of my students did. And yes. Z U S for this. Means booger in Korean. But it's literally ko is nose. Dakchi is snack. It's literally nose snack. Booger. Let me fix that for you. There you go. All right. This game is uh, the card game version of Ninjato, which some people would argue was already a card game, but it had a board. You could go to multiple places. It's a really good it had game. Stripped everything away except the core mechanisms. And you know what? This is a better game. Ninjato. Really? So it kills Ninjata for you? I think it, 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 I still had it, and I am fairly certain I just got rid of it not too long ago after I got this. I think oh, this is that's a better, why I put it in the library. I think this is a mm. better game than the original. It manages to do pretty much everything you're doing, but it does so in a faster package, ultimately, and there is more going on in other people's turns. You are, you are likely to take something from the table while the players around the table, not you, are taking a turn, pushing their luck. That's the main mechanism here. And it's the same core mechanic, the main thing. It's this idea of you're attacking someplace, and you can do so with brute strength or with stealth. As you reveal guardians to that place, you have to, if going with stealth, play lower numbered cards, or vice versa if you're playing you know, with brute strength. And you will start running out of cards. You want to you keep going? You want to flip another one and see if you can fight that one? That's it. Once that's done, you'll take some cards. But the other players take some, too, from what's left behind. I really found this such a good... It almost wouldn't have happened without the original game. I don't think this is possible to because there's so much there that was condensed into this. And familiarity with the original one helped me understand it, not to say it's dense or anything or obtuse, but man, what an impressive deck of cards, and how much was done here with just that. You gotta try it. If you like push your luck, you gotta try it. Kodachi. No yeah, snack. Yeah, Got it. Right. My number three. <laughs> I'm afraid to say anything else at this point. My number three. Once, when I was an unenlightened fool, once, when I was on the line, fool, I was unafraid. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, I, tried was to. I was in the dog. Anyhow, I threw a game off a roof. Oh. How would you do that? Maybe. I don't know. Entertainment, probably. That's the views. Oh, you or you succumb to that harshest Is this the of therapy mistresses. session? Would you like to lay down on a couch? No, but as the years have gone notes. by, I've enjoyed Paolo Mori's games more and more. Um, <coughs> To the point where now, when he does a game, I'm pretty excited about it. But this one didn't look that exciting from it. And it's made by a company who I think their stuff's okay. And in fact, the quality is still not that great in this game. And that's Blitzkrieg. Mm. Blitzkrieg from uh, PSC Games. Their, their game quality's okay. Um, and this one, even the, the cover and the art and the components in this game are okay. The cover's probably better than the game itself. Um, but... It is components. supposedly a 20... Yeah, I'm sorry, the components. It is supposedly a 20-minute World War II game, which, as we all know, is Balderdash. That would have saved us all a lot of time, though. I Frank, like Balderdash. Franklin it's D. Roosevelt like and some sort of trivia Hitler sit game. down and be like, I win. War's over. Wow. That would have been a lot faster. It would have been uh, a lot uh, better for the world, yes. I think so. Uh, but Blitzkrieg is a two-player back-and-forth tug-of-war game. To the point where I think you would enjoy this one. It feels like Twilight Struggle shrunk down into 20 minutes. You're fighting over different theaters by putting out counters. You feel once the theater is filled with counters, then whoever's farther ahead on their side of the track will score a certain number of victory points. When you place a counter down, where you place it down can give you bonuses or benefits. It is smooth, really well done. And if you don't like the historical theme, they made an expansion where you can pretend that. Germany has conquered America. Japan is fighting back against, um, they're attacking now, the German-held America, with the help of Godzilla. So it's a really dumb theme, but it's the exact same game to some degree. Mm. Really, lots of fun. I enjoy this one. One of the best two-player games I've played in a long time, and I was really surprised. 
I was there when you were playing it for the first time. You were, and I was going, Woo! we had just played a really bad game. That's true. That one did not make our list. <laughs> that one did not. That one has not been reviewed yet either. We'll, we'll, we'll be back to that one in a while. You can just try to guess what it is. My number three, Blitzkrieg. Number two. All right, my number two had a, had a couple of strikes going against it uh, on its way in. First of all, it, it is an intellectual property game, which I'm always kind of... Uh, leery on uh, on the onset because they have a track record of not being as good of a game as normal um, from certain publishers. What? No, I'm trying to guess the game. Okay, but it also has. I need one more clue. It also has two acts, and that one is another thing where the game oh, is split one? up into two different parts, and Still that is usually a death knell, and it is Jaws. Jaws. Um, uh, from Robinsberger, yeah, and this that's one. Weird as Jaws, I got it, but that was, that was, that was, I would have just gone with the fin. But okay. Well, obviously everyone got the clue, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, both of those strikes turned into boons for for me because they really have Boon. made this game. Uh, a great game. Uh, I really enjoy the fact that it's split up into two different acts because it's it's thematically driven that way. Uh, it's not just we're going to have two acts just to be cute. No, it, it's, it follows the course of the movie and uh, does so in such a way that it keeps you uh, wrapped up in the theme. On top of that, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It, the first act is done pretty quick. Second act, maybe. It might last a little longer, but that's usually because of the die rolls that are not going the way you would like them to go. Uh, but it, 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 even still, it doesn't take that long. It just might last a little bit longer than you want it to. But I really enjoyed this game a lot, uh, much more than I thought it would, which is why it's my number two, Jaws. All right. Uh -oh. I actually thought this would be in your top ten. Um... There were a lot of fun games this year. <laughs> a lot of fun games. I'm sorry. Every time I put these lists together, I look at it and say, how people can say gaming is getting worse is beyond me. I mean, If you yeah. say that, you're simply jaded. That's I mean, all I can think of. Really, my top five could have easily made it into my top ten. But because we try to keep this, the, oh, the well, list Pete Shirey is separate. Giving you props. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. All right. My number two is a... Uh, I think it's a game that showed up, and again, we, we did not know that it is, this was a thing that was coming out. It's also a city-building game or town-building game that I really enjoyed, and I Which don't like rare. that Which is rare. He hates building cities. I do. He built no city. We built no Especially city. Especially not on rock and roll. Uh, uh. That's we the only kind of cities no he builds. no city. Uh, uh. <laughs> this is Old West Empresario. Wow. This is you a good one. That's this right. This game is really good. Yeah, it is. It's almost like it. I know. No, I'm saying it's almost oh, themeless. Oh, yeah, huh? It's almost themeless in a sense. That's disgusting. You take that back. It's about the Wild West <laughs> or the Old West <laughs> if you're trying to be civilized. That Old West is wild. Sometimes. But in this one, it's not too bad. You well, are wild actually west. It's building. It's the wild, wild West. Oh, really? All right. You're building a town. You are doing so with dice and tiles, of course. Um, and the turns in this are extremely quick. You're taking a die and either using it to construct a tile that is below that die in that column, or you're triggering a power. The buildings, many of them, have powers associated with one die face. So if I take that three from the board, from this lineup, I can either take a tile underneath that, build it, do whatever it does and score some points for adjacencies, things like that. Or take that die, I trigger all my threes in my town. That is super fun. And you can go with build a big old city, try to score a bunch of things from you know those connections you're making. Or build a town that has a bunch of tiles that trigger on a two. And, and then hope, hope and those then twos roll. And then you're hitting those twos. Every time they come up, you're like, bam, I'm doing all this stuff. I thought that was fascinating and really fun. Just fun to, to get all these powers. Um, I was very surprised by this, I have to say. Not just the fact that it showed up kind of out of nowhere, but the fact that I liked it this much. A game that normally I would just write off. I don't like 
city building games. The only one, the only other one I like still is uh, Quadropolis. Quadropolis. Woo! That's it. I know him so it's well. It's a little simpler. These connections of like, if this is next to this, you score points. But it doesn't want to be next to that. They keep that to a minimum. You start adding too much garbage on top of that. I'm like, no, man. I don't want to. I don't want to have to deal with all this geometrical blah blah blah. You know, which I don't mind geometry. We're in high games. class here. I don't mind geometry in games. I just don't like them in city building. It gets annoying. This one is great. You got to check it out. Cool. Old West Impresario. I probably want to get a copy of this at some point. This time I like it. That was on my short list as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You liked it. You played it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. My number two is a game that when I first heard about it, thought it would not work because it was broken. It made you throw up in your mouth, I remember. No. I just sounded, it sounded ridiculous. Then I played it, and I love it. It is ridiculous, and that is QE. QE, the Where? game... Qui. The Where? game where you, you are okay. essentially printing your own money. You're a country, you can print your own money. So in this game, you can bid any amount you want to win tiles. Except at the end of the game, whoever bids the most overall loses the game. And who wins? Whoever has the most points from these tiles that they've won. Oh, Snapple Juice. It's one of those so things you, where you can eliminate yourself. Sam could bid 20, Z bid 36, and I bid 275. Uh -huh. And I am I have bid the most money so far. And that's how your group could play. Or you could play, my initial bid is usually 35 million. And then we go up higher than that. It is, it is entertaining no, as all get out. Huh? No, we don't. You lose. Yeah, but you'll be tempted to go higher because you won't win any tiles. I'll just keep bidding high and winning all the tiles. Yeah, but you'll lose. But you won't win. No, it's a prisoner's dilemma. If so ever, if, who? If he keeps bidding ten wins. million, if he keeps bidding ten million, all I have to do is bid eleven million once, and I'll win. Yeah. Because he's going to eliminate himself, I get and it. I'm second place. Well, I, I understand. You pull, you pull the group along. It just doesn't sound fun. Oh, I agree with that. I've not, I've had zero temptation to play this. I and he, really and he keeps really hitting like the this drum too. I know, right? He's like, "This is a great game," and I keep going, "Stop talking, Tom Vassell," but it's not working. <laughs> well, that's never gonna work. He could never. He could cut his vocal cords out. What? That's make him stop. <laughs> horrible. Oh my goodness. I'm just saying it could. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, my number two is QE, and I'll be quiet now. And finally, number one. And done. And my number one. No, no, we got to see who's doing number one first. Oh, yeah, sorry, okay. buddy. Three oh, dice apiece. Three dice apiece. I ain't giving you any of those. Get your own. I can reach those. Well, I didn't knock them over the three there. yellows. Those aren't yellows. They all have shades of yellow. Okay. I'm going to take three random ones because... We'll take one off the table so no one cheats. What are we doing with these? Is that loaded? No. No one gets a fourth die. Oh, okay. What are we doing with this? Highest roll. Here we go. Eight. Eight. <laughs> That's not so hot. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> that, really, that really works. It's really helping. <laughs> that, my good man, is also, also eight. eight. Ooh, the I same be, exact distribution, too. I might be in. And that is Eleven. almost eight. Eleven. All right. What's the order, Sam? <laughs> Eleven. Let's just keep the regular order. This is so nice. Regular like that order. That's my favorite. That's your favorite. That is a good looking one. Those pips really pop. Pips My number one has pop. already been mentioned by somebody else. <gasps> There's crossover? There is one crossover. All right, hold up. Hang on. <sighs> I'm so tired of these kinds of games, and this one really kind of... Silver okay, I think gold. it's me. Silver and gold. Silver and gold is correct. Bam! It's not me! Yes. Yeah, Silver yeah. and gold is correct. Um, Say what, yeah. <laughs> when somebody introduced me to this game at the gathering, they, they were like, this is like a roll and write game. And I was like, okay, well, at the you very least. You did that least, voice in your head. You did the voice. Do the no, voice. No, I didn't do the you voice. You did do, do the, the voice. voice. You're like, oh, it's another Brooklyn night. <laughs> you did the voice. No, I heard the voice, I didn't Sam. do the voice. Oh, we have to dry erase the tiles? 
Yeah, pretty much. That's your uh, voice. But I was That's just the voice. so kind of over. There's so many of these games coming out, yeah? I disagree. It's the, no, you definitely <laughs> agree. No one is disagreeing. Well, I should say and some people are. And this one was the first one I played that you didn't have to roll anything. Oh, really? You had never played one of the other ones? No. There's not a ton okay. of them, actually. There's not. You're right. There's, There's not, not a but whole this... lot of them. But this one was like, it's a roll and write game, but you're not rolling dice. You're just choosing a card. Flipping. Oh, fli- yeah, it's flipping, a flipping right. Flipping yeah. and... It's a flipping right game. I'm going to flip and play this game. <laughs> hey, hey, calm down. So I really flipping. enjoyed this game a lot, it, and it was by far my biggest surprise this year because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much done with rolling rights. Uh, but there are just a few out there that I really enjoyed. This was at the top of that list. So I really enjoyed it. Everything he said about it was just really cool. The component quality, the, the cards and everything, how it just kind of just wipes right off. It's really fun, really great, and uh, that's why it's my number one. Silver and gold. Have you played Trails of Tucano? No. I it's a cereal. I like it. It's a cereal? It's Okay, Trail makes. I, guess. I don't know. You, I think you'll like it. It's also a flip cards and, and right. Boomerang so. is a flip and right. Boomerang is a good one too. Boomerang was not that good. Uh, <clears throat> my number one pick is a cooperative game. It's a mass market game. It's a game that I was not expecting to be as fun as it turned out to be. So we played horrified. Yesterday? Oh, what a horrifying pick! Are you love it. I still haven't played this game yet. This is in his top Because nobody will play it. They must not like it as much as they do. Decade. Or they just don't like playing games with me. One of those One is of those accurate. Two. What is going on? Because I haven't played this game yet. Oh, you haven't played this? No. Oh, dude, let's uh, set up a it's play date for coming, that for you. It's coming. It's coming. Monday. We'll play a game. <laughs> there we go. Sounds so there it is. Sounds like he would love to play with you. That's the first joke. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this feels... This feels like it contains all those things that I like in games such as Pandemic, to a degree. Um, it has a cool theme. It's not necessarily something I that blew my mind immediately, right? I'm not. I wasn't sitting around waiting for a Universal Monsters board game. But if I'm gonna get one, this is precisely the one I want. Yeah. I love the cooperation in it. I like that it feels like it drags to the modern age classic tropes. And I know that kind of is tongue-in-cheek because of the theme. I don't mean it to be. But moving figures on a board, a la Clue, right? But you're cooperating. You're just grabbing a few little tiles and then cashing them in or, or using them to defend yourself from monsters or to defeat them. The way you defeat each monster is unique to it. The artwork is superb. I really like the look of this game. The whole thing has it feels familiar in some ways, but original and approachable. That's the thing. I, I played this with my, you know, my little nephew and my mom. And other than having to help her with the English because she doesn't speak English, um, it was an easy game to play. Worked out well. So this one I really enjoyed. And I played Solitaire a few times, enjoyed that. I was very surprised by this. This could have made my top 10 of the year. And you add on top of that that this is kind of a mass market game. You know, Target, that sort of... That's cool, man. This is a great promissory note of what's to come in the future. I agree. Horrified. Number one pick. I'm waiting for the Jaws expansion. My number one. Jaws <laughs> Oh, for horrified, like there's a shark swimming around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jaws is a universal monster. My number yeah, one is a crossover. Ooh, I crumpled up my piece of paper. It's probably with you anyway. <laughs> what are you ruining? It's with Z Garcia. Horrified. Told you. Also horrified, and it's just missed my top ten. Yeah. Like this is probably eleven for the year. Um, just a solid game. I agree with everything Z said. Uh, this is my twelve of the year. And I'll talk about what my 11 is on that list. What a cheater. Okay, but no, this is, um, yeah, I just like, I've, I like the fact that there's t- diversity between the monsters. I actually think this is better than Pandemic. I might too. You don't know it's, me. I just think this. Find out next month. 
I, 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 but here's the thing. I think, though, that the theme is very accessible, where it's like, we're going to play a horror game, but it's not scary at all. Sure. Right, so everyone could be like, ooh, Frankenstein. You know, that's, that's fun for people. It's not that it's scary. It's not like saying, we're playing Arkham Horror, and you're like, oh, uh, I'll pass. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. Monster. So, just a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing... I, I think Prospero Hall, the guys who did this one, I think they're one of the best design teams around. And the fact they're doing mass market games, I mean, they did uh, Funko Verse 2 this year. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, they're on fire. Yes. And so, really looking forward to seeing what they come out with next. Well, I would so. love to see an expansion to this. That would be great. I would be really surprised if we don't see one because they haven't done the Phantom of the Opera yet and they haven't done Jaws. Hunchback and Notre Dame, and Jaws is not considered a classic Universal monster. It's classic in our book, Pete. So, these are not our top 10 games of the year, folks. That's coming Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow, we're doing our top 10 gaming experiences. Ooh. Great times we had gaming this year. Uh, these are all solo gaming. Not all. Or of maybe them. gaming I, adjacent. I pulled the Sam Haley. It's the top, f gaming. the bottom five are experiences with folks at conventions <laughs> or family. Top five solo game experiences. <laughs> December 3rd. Number three <laughs> will shock you. <laughs> um, you so you then we'll be more? doing you our more? Click here. top ten on Friday. Um, I'm not going to ask you guys what we missed this year because, again, some of that stuff may be in our top ten. So we don't want to spoil that. I know what it is that I missed and won at Aquatica. Hmm. And that those adventure time or adventure game, whatever. I thought you took one of those home. I did, and with my exuberant amounts of time, I played it. That Can you feel the sarcasm <laughs> ripping from your hat? <laughs> Can oh, you feel it, the sarcasm. It burns. Dripping from your hat like a. So if you're wondering why the game did not smack. make the list, it's possible it's in the top ten. Because those are 30 different games, although not 30, because I'm almost guaranteed there'll be crossover. Oh, there's going to be some crossover. I think. No, my list. <laughs> what? You think you're I don't unique? Think so. Yeah, I do. Man, that's it. In Roy, this, hook me up with his in list. This, I'm in copying this rabble, it. You better believe it. Talk about verbatim. Alrighty, folks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Until tomorrow. Oh, and tomorrow's board game breakfast in the morning, too. Yo. Oh. Come back for our last in a while snack talk. <laughs> so. Oh, skipping breakfast tomorrow. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>